gotten than we ever could have gotten out of AGP 8X. And to make that even uh, even better, you can, in some systems, depending on uh, the implementation, you might have two AGP, or rather, two PCI Express by 16 slots, and you can take two video cards and aggregate their performance together to get just about eight gigabytes worth of data throughput as opposed to a 2,133 or 2.1 gigabytes of data throughput. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a photograph I've taken of my own motherboard here. And we have a few PCI slots here. Now in newer motherboards, we're having fewer and fewer of these. Typically, we'd have between four and six of these PCI slots. But because we have other kinds of technology now, such as PCI Express that we see over here, it's not really as necessary as it used to be. So here I'm going to go ahead and uh, circle around my PCI slot. And you can see why I'm using hot pink because it shows up a little better. <laughs> Actually, I guess it doesn't in these dark areas. But if you were to go ahead and touch one of these slots, for example, then you would feel that it's kind of got a ceramic type of a feel or a stone type of a feel. This is the same kind of a material that's used for uh, a lot of electrical insulators in industry. And that's the whole purpose of that, electrical insulation, and as, as well as the ability to handle heat. Now, the other thing to identify here is what these various uh, little keys are here within the slot. Notice that there's a key right here. And when I say key, that's just a, a notch that kind of sticks up out of the slot. This is designed to be able to prevent you from accidentally inserting the wrong kind of a card in the slot. The notch that we see here, then this is the back of the motherboard where we would uh, put the bracket in for our adapter. Uh, and this is the, the cl closer to the front. Uh, this key that's closer to the front represents 5 volts. And I'll just write over here in the white so we can see a little bit better. That's a 5 volt key that we have there. Now with this kind of a PCI-X, that's what these are also are. These are PCI-X slots. And you wouldn't know that unless you read the manual. You can't just tell visually by looking at that. Uh, but these PCI-X slots have 5 volt capability. But if I had a, a card that was a 3.3 volt card, I could also put it in here as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of cards so you can see how this key has some relevance. And so then let me give some relevance here. Let me actually go to a, a closer up view of that. I'm going to go back to this expansion slot. This is more of a close up view of that same motherboard that I just showed you. And here once again, this is the, the key for 5 volts. Uh, as we take a look at this then, and this is the back of the motherboard here where the bracket goes. This is closer to the front. As we take a look at this then, let's take a look at a network card. This is a PCI network card. It's a little bit of an older one, and it operates at 5 volts. Now, how can I tell by looking at this that this card is a 5-volt network card? You bet, you bet. Because of this notch right here, guess what? That notch allows that key to fit right up in there. And if I go back to our diagram right here, to our photograph, that notch would allow this key to slide right up in there, and it would fit in like a glove. If this were a different kind of a kind of a PCI slot, maybe it was strictly a 3-volt slot, well, the 3 volts will have a key closer to the back of this slot, maybe like right about in this area. If I tried to take that card that I just showed you, this one right here, and then you can see where the this 3-volt um, key would go in, in a notch right here, but it's not cut out, then you can see that this card could never fit into a 3.3 volt slot because there's no notch in this expansion card that would allow it to fit into that expansion slot. So thankfully, it's kind of you know, dummy-proofed so that you don't have an electrical disaster with your various types of devices and motherboards. All right, let's go back here too. I'll take a look at another type of a device that we could fit in here. Let me go take a look at another one here. How about this? This is a PCI card as well, but notice that this one has two notches. There's one right there, and there's one right there. This one's for 5 volts. This one's for 3.3 volts. And this is a universal card. It will fit into either slot. Generally speaking, if it can fit into a slot and use less voltage, it defaults to the lower voltage here. That makes it run cooler and, in many cases, more efficiently. Uh, by the way, just in case you're wondering what kind of a card this is, this is a TV card. Notice there's a coax connection here, so I can just take my cable TV cable, plug it directly into that, and I can actually watch television on my computer. <laughs> so people think I'm actually doing productive work when I'm just watching Andy Griffith or something. <laughs> okay, enough of that. 
And then now we're turning here to this bus bandwidth document. Let me point out that you can typically take older technology cards, expansion cards, and install them into newer slots up to a point. So for example, maybe I have an older PCI card here, maybe an old modem or something. I could take that old modem and I could install it into, oh, you know, this 64-bit wide card slot right here, this expansion slot portion of the slot will not be used, the, the longer extended 64-bit portion of that will not be used, but it's backwards compatible so they can take an older card. The exception to that, however, will be 5-volt devices. PCI-X does not support 5 volts, so if I have an older 5-volt card here and I try to install on a PCI-X slot, that could be a disaster, so you want to avoid that. Also, if I were to take one of these older cards and put it into a newer slot, it may limit the, the speed of it. For example, if I've got a card here that's capable of only 266 megabytes per second, and I install it into you know, this slot down here, PCI-X133, then it might limit the speed of any other devices that are on this same bus to only 266, even though its potential is for 1,066. Some motherboards, and you'll just have to check your documentation, may have a way around that because they may ha have the ability to design separate PCI-X channels for better backward compatibility. Now then here, let's take a look at those 64-bit slots. Here's a conventional slot. This is just your normal 32-bit PCI slot. Okay, so this is 32-bit. And this one here is going to be a 64-bit. Notice that it has on the end of it additional connectors here. 64. Uh, just because, by the way, it's twice the bit width does not mean it's twice the length because of the way the contacts are made and various signaling. Uh, to make it exactly double the length would be to be redundant. For example, some of the grounding and power pins back here would be just as efficient in this slot as they are in this slot. We don't need to repeat them out here. But for additional signaling, we have these out here that will uh, effectively double the capabilities of some of our devices. Now I can take a 32-bit card and install it, of course, in the 32-bit slot. But if I have two 32-bit cards, guess what? I can take that other 32-bit card and I can ins also install it in this. Notice that there's a stop right here. That, that, it's not really a key in this case. It just defines the form factor uh, in that it, it, it ends right here the same way the 32-bit slot does. That just gives us the capability of installing a 32-bit PCI device in the 64-bit slot. And let me show you an example of that as well. I think I've got an example here. Yeah, this is one of my own servers. Here I've got a 32-bit uh, slot. Here I've got a 64-bit slot that's empty. Here I've got a 32-bit device in the 64-bit slot. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that quite well or not, but here's a, an example of where the notch and the key mate up together and allow it to be installed properly. And here's where our 32 bits ends. And if I had a 64-bit card, it would fill in these connectors. This one's longer, but it's not a 64-bit because, and you can't see it from here, but there are no contacts down here inside the slot. It's really still a 32-bit card. Now then let's go ahead and take a look here at an example of a 64-bit card. This is a SCSI card from Adaptic, and this is a good example of why you would want 64-bit devices, because things like uh, SCSI cards will have extremely high throughput. We've got a lot of data moving through it. You could probably use these in servers. And again, the 64-bit slots are more likely to be found, uh, found in high-end workstations and servers. Let's take a look at the notches on this one so we can identify what's going on with it. First of all, what's this notch here do? Well, this is a 3.3 volt, 3.3 volt notch. But wait a minute, what's this notch then? This notch here is a 5 volt notch. This means that this particular card is universal, and I could put this card into a 5 volt slot or a 3.3 volt slot. Once again, if the slot is also capable of both, then it's going to usually default down to the lower voltage. Uh, and then we have this notch right up here. What's that for? That's simply to make it fit into that 64-bit slot, and it uh, goes around the key that designates the end of the 32-bit portion of the slot and extends on to the 64-bit portion here. And I'll just draw that in there, like 64-bit is from here to the end of the card. And then here's